all across Northwest and West Central Ohio. Tonight we're in Blue Street Stadium at Archibald. Big matchup in the NWOAL. A couple of teams uh, fighting for a little playoff position except to be battle. Also one of the best rivalries in all in Northwest Ohio. They battle for the Lions Club as the Archibald Blue Streets entertain the Wauseon Indians. Hello again, everyone. With my partner, Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. And uh, partner, looking here in Archibald. We've seen a lot of these matchups down through the years. Unfortunately, it looks like for these two teams, maybe uh, first place of the NWOAL out of reach. Need a little help in the last couple of weeks as uh, Liberty Center undefeated seems to be rolling, but still a lot to at stake here in this big rivalry matchup tonight. Now, partner, where else would you rather be than right here right now watching a great rivalry hanging out with the mayor of Northwest Ohio. And you've seen a lot of these matchups. Mm -hmm. We've had it every single year since we've been on the air up here in Northwest <clears throat> Ohio. And it's been all in favor of Archibald, five in a row. And uh, the senior class at Archibald, they don't know what it's like to lose to their big rival across town in Wauseon. But Wauseon's got a real good shot tonight. They made a change at quarterback about four weeks ago. And Trey Parsons has really got that offense clicking. And uh, you talked about Liberty Center maybe winning the league. I'm going to go ahead and project it right now. Liberty Center is going to win the NWOAL, but these two teams, they got a lot to play for. Playoffs are big coming up. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a couple minutes. But first, we want to tell you that our pregame sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Archibald and Wauseon is the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. All right, Miles, let's talk about the Indians of Wauseon. Our fourth-year head coach, Sean Moore, started two and two and then as if you said made a change of quarterback seems to pay off they've won four in a row to get to six and two four one in the NWOAL currently sit ninth in the division of four region 14 so they seem to be pretty good at positioning to finish in the top 16 for a playoff now the battle is whether or not they can jump a spot get into that top eight and maybe get one home game or Maybe with a little bit of luck, get into that top four, see if you can get two. Mm. Yeah, huge difference being eight or nine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely uh, get to that eight spot. Now you can start thinking about what you can do in the playoffs. You get nine through 16, that is very difficult. Now, Trey Parsons, as you mentioned, boy, he has done nothing but scintillate the football field. 71% completions, 12 TDs, only four interceptions, 1,183 yards. And why is he getting all those yards? Take a look at that quartet of receivers. Sam Smith, who's going to UT, uh, University of Toledo, Ethan Borton, Tyson Rodriguez, and Jude Armstrong. Those are unbelievable receivers. Now the big key though for this offense, you look at those five guys. Randy, last time we had them, they were absolutely mauled by Liberty Center up front. <laughs> These five guys up front, Vasquez, Snow, Spurgeon, Leininger, and Patterson, they are gonna have to do a great job tonight, allow Trey Parsons some time to throw the football. Yeah, we said uh, Wasian on a four game winning streak since that loss to Liberty Center, defeated Swat 35-6. Evergreen 33-8, Patrick Henry 38-13 in the battle last week with a Delta where the Panthers kicked a field goal late in the first half. 3-0 carried that all the way yeah. into the last 90 seconds of the ball game for the Indians were able to get into the end zone, pull out the victory. And Coach Morse said it's such a strange game because they only had two offensive possessions in the whole first half. So Delta, you know, continuously running the football over and over. And he said, well, see, I don't go on like 10 play drives. So the clock was really winding. And next thing you know, it's halftime. You only had two possessions. You're down 3-0. Nothing, but on the defensive end, I want you to hear this unbelievable stance, uh, the stat. Chance Snow, defensive tackle, or defensive end right there, number 51. Randy, he's got 56 tackles on the year. 16 are for a tackle for loss. That guy can live in the backfield. He also has three and a half sacks, so he's going to be a big part of what they do defensively. And a couple of names there in that lineup, a couple of good linebackers, a junior, Austin Kovar, a senior, and Logan Carroll combined for about 130 tackles this year. Kovar able to get in the backfield as well with three sacks. Yeah, only one tackle separates him. Kovar was 65 and Carroll was 64. So those guys, they know how to roam sideline to sideline. And uh, you talk about uh, this line starts uh, up front with a lineman Zayden Kessler as well. He's able to kind of crash and, and do some good things. Yeah, he's a leading sacker for the team. Five and a half sacks. And uh, you know the way that Archibald likes to throw the football at times, he's going to have to be very active to get in the backfield and kind of harass Kate Brenner. So for the Indians, they close the season after this one at Bryan. So still one more matchup. Good one for them in Division Four as well. So chance to pick up a few more computer points. Sean Moore now in his fourth year with a record of 29 and 11. See the Archibald Band Miles. Let's talk a little bit about the homestanding Blue Streaks. Seven and one, four one in the NWOAL, and one name 
stands out when you take a look at this offense. Senior running back Carson Dominic and what he's able to do. 996 rushing yards, 303 receiving yards, 23 total touchdowns. <laughs> 23 total touchdowns. That's obscene, isn't it? Yeah, the diesel truck, man. When he gets going forward, watch out. He's going to turn you into a speed bump. His philosophy on running the football is fantastic. It says, I want to outwork and I want to out hit. Hey, that's great if you're a running back. He kind of reminds me of a Carlos Hyde. Remember Carlos oh, Hyde yeah. years ago? Runs like that. I'll go even further. I know how you like dated references. John Riggins for the Redskins oh. a little bit. Yeah, runs very similar. Again, Super Bowl MVP. He was, yeah. Uh, the leader of this uh, offense is junior quarterback Cade Brenner at 64% of his passes. 1,450 yards, 10 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. But he's played pretty mistake-free football the last couple of weeks. He has. And the thing I would like about Brenner is his mobility. He is comfortable throwing on the move. They'll move the pocket for him. They'll go four receivers to his side. They'll throw, mix in a lot of formations because Kate Brenner is very mobile in the pocket. As we take a look at the uh, defense for the uh, Blue Streaks, a uh, guy that you've always been high on when we've seen him a couple of times this year, senior linebacker Gabe Chapa, 71 tackles, and in the backfield, junior Chase Miller, four interceptions. Yeah, Chapa, when you look at him, you, you say, that guy, he's going to go make tackles, but he sure does. He's only 5'7", 165 pounds, but he plays like he's 205 10. He is an absolute tenacious linebacker, and team, team him up with Carson Domic. That is a great duo. But you take a look at the back end. Guys like Steven Diller, who's second on his team in tackles. Mm -hmm. He is the quarterback of the secondary. You'll watch number nine. He'll direct the rest of the guys in the secondary, get them lined up. He is so valuable, like a quarterback for this defense. But a guy I really like, Devin Morris, number 20 at the defensive end. When he is healthy, he is uh, unblockable, and he looks like he's healthy, ready to go tonight. When we had that Wasian starting lineup on your screen, you saw all the receivers, and you take a look at that. Archibald defense, a lot of DBs. They're playing to go most of the night with five DBs on the field. Yeah, it's a 4-2-5 alignment. Defensive coordinator Jack Downey, who does a better job than him coordinating defenses, right? Think he's uh, talked to football his whole life, maybe? I think so. Yeah, Jack Downey does a great job scheming up the defense and the great assistant staff that helps him out with it. They're 4-2-5. It's going to cause a little bit of havoc, so it'll be important that Trey Parsons sees what the coverage is before they snap the football. Speaking of David Dominic, now we're wrapping up his eighth year already. He's the head coach of the Blue Streaks at 63 and 22 and they finish next week on the road at Patrick Henry by the way they come in sixth in division five region 18 so depending on which one of the, the expert websites you look at either Joe Idol fantastic 50 both of them I think have the blue streak safely in the playoffs it comes to the uh, top 16 in the region against just how far can they climb and what are they looking at uh, do you know are you home Home and then away, or maybe you get a couple of extra home games. It's really tough to say that they're seven and one, but they're kind of under the radar. But they are, right? They they lost everybody when they lost to Liberty Center. It was like, kind of wrote them off, right? But it was only sixteen nothing to a dominant football team like Liberty Center. And after that, people kind of forgot about Archibald. But they're making a statement late in the year. They might be something to deal with in the playoffs. Just about uh, ready to go for this one between Archibald and Wasian. We'll take a break. And come back with more pregame here. You're watching High School Football Live on WOSN. Hey, Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here from Blue Streak Stadium in Archibald as the uh, streaks making their way onto the field. Lots of tiny streaks as well. Eighth grade teams, the junior high teams, everyone. Welcome in. Different look, by the way. We we uh, saw this when we got here. Different look for the Blue Streak home unis. Right. It's the only time we've seen Archibald this year on the road. Blue tops, white pants. Yeah. A lot of moms upset. <laughs> I'd like the white pants. So it, shades of uh, the University of Toledo, maybe. Old look, old yeah, look, 1970s yeah. look. Maybe uh, Coach Dominic's going to get Chuck Ely to come out, play a little quarterback for him. Wasion, the classic whites with the red numerals. But let's get to everyone's favorite part of our pregame partner, and that is our State Bank 
checks of the game. And let's start with Owasian Indians. They beat the clock. 2.3. Remember that game show beat the clock? Mm -hmm. Well, 2.3, 2 seconds and 3 tenths. That is what they need to release the football. Trey Parsons, anything longer in 2.3, it's going to be a problem. I think he's going to get hit a lot if he goes past 2.3. Get it out quick. Perimeter pressure. They love to run the quick screen game. They are great on the perimeter. Get it out there in a hurry. And then number three, splash plays. What are splash plays? Those are big plays. You have Sam Smith, 6'4", 220, runs like a 4-0 something. Go vertical, baby. Test that secondary for Archbold. Get some splash plays. Is that the official time he puts on 4-0 four, <laughs> four, four something? Something, yes. That's fast. <laughs> how, about some, so, how about some checks for the Archibald Blue Streaks? Yeah, now we're one. Uh, honk, honk. No, it's uh, uh, You know why? Because that's a diesel truck sound. Give the diesel truck the football a lot. A year ago, Carson Dominic dominated that football game along with DJ Newman carrying the football. Let the diesel truck carry it again. Number two, the stuntmen. The front four on defense, let them be active, run some tackle and stunts, bring some blitzes, get to that pocket crash to, for Trey Parson. And number three, special team smarts. That is an important game because they have three dynamic returners, Wasion does. You better be smart how you kick the football to them. You don't want to kick it deep. Next thing you know, they're running the ball back easy for six points. And that is our State Bank checks of the game. And again, a pregame show tonight. For our broadcast between Archibald and Wasion is the State Bank invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Well, Miles, we've kind of hinted at this. The last two or three weeks or so, we said, well, we thought it might be here. Think it's going to be this. We can now officially tell you that our broadcast next Friday live on WOSN will have us back at Edgerton for the first time in a couple of years. So the Bulldogs are resurging at Edgerton Bulldog Club. They're going to be what appears to be the last hurdle that's going to try to keep the Antwerp Archers from winning their first ever GMC title. Now, Edgerton at Tenor tonight. Huge football game mm -hmm. there. They get the win, carrying only that one loss to Ayersville in the GMC, hosting an Antwerp football team that, boy, was were they impressive a week ago when we had them against Ayersville? Wow. A lot of fun sitting in the stands. Been to a lot of Antwerp basketball games the last couple of years. But uh, good to see the parents and football support as well. Wasion won the toss. They deferred, and Archibald will get the ball first. Yeah, a little new tradition here at Archibald. You hear what they're playing over the PA? Yeah, that's, that's going to be a new thing everywhere for yeah. a while. Yeah, Timmy Trumpet. I wish Timmy Trumpet was here live. <laughs> Is he still playing when the Mets come out and play? Oh, oh, oh that's so, wow. so, Sorry, wow. Mets fans. Sorry about that. Our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. So Tyson Rodriguez, who Miles mentioned, may be the best player in the NWOAL considering everything he does. Gets this one underway. He's a kicker as well as one of the best defensive backs and receivers. So what do we feel? Balls on the ground. loose. Everyone's scrambling for it. We got markers, the uh, not penalty flags. We'll take a look. Put that ball away, young man. It's the hopes and dreams of this community, but it's going to get punched out right there. Let's see who comes up with it. I believe that was Logan Patterson, number 53, knocked it free. And it's going to stay Blue Streak football as we take a look once again. See him reach yep. through with the left hand. Left hand got it. What a huge break for Archibald because do you see all the white jerseys around that football? Streaks take over from their own 24. Handoff Carson first down, Carson Dominic, Dominic working that left side. Carries defenders. Still moving. It looks like he's going to get out across the 30-yard line. <laughs> Great call by you saying carries defenders. Let's watch how many guys it's going to take to get him to the football, get him to the ground. Get those shoulder pads. And then one, two, three, four white jerseys. And he's still fighting. Remember his philosophy, out, work, out, hit. He did it on the first snap, that's for true. Get an eight on the run is going to bring up second and two. And the shotgun, they'll go oh, right to him again. Running. Not the big run. Looks like he's not even going to have enough first down. Wasian oh, players are saying, ball came loose. I don't know if any of the officials are agreeing with them. 
Uh, good recognition by that Wasiat defense. They saw Devin Morris kind of in each back position, number 28. They smelled that it's going to be an isolation run, and exactly what it was. I think it was Snow that got back there first. Slowed down Dominic before he could get going. And they're going to say no gain on the play, so third and two coming up from the 32-yard line. Yeah, you see Morris playing the fullback position in front of Dominic. Lossie on show and blitz. Brenner once again in a shotgun. Gives it to Dominic once again. He's going to spin off a tackler. And that second effort is going to give the Blue Streaks the first first down of the night. Hey, he's not just a big fella, but look, it's going to be a counter tray pulling the guard around, using Morris as a lead, a lead block. Rodriguez comes up in a hurry. But the spin move, Carson Dominic, the diesel truck's got a little traction as well. Pick up a four. Moves it out just across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Just underway here from Blue Streak Stadium in Archibald. It's senior night. Honor the band members, the football players, the cheerleaders, big group. Brenner looks to pass, fires this one in the flat. It is Dominic again. Second leading receiver is a part of this team as well. And he's gonna be just shy of the 45 yard line. Now it's gonna be Kovar working one on one with Dominic. It's a flood concept. Tough for Kovar because he has to drop. And at the last second, he sees Dominic go to the flat. He's going to have to get on his hip, and you see the separation. You know, Dominic does so many good things for this Archbold offense. Four snaps, four, four balls in the hand for Dominic. Second and two coming up for the Blue Streaks. Good drive to begin this one. Brenner can't find anyone. He's going to take off throw. That one might have hit off the back of the official that one's going to be incomplete tried to duck brender might have been passing the line of scrimmage yeah it did as well. look close didn't it let's see if we get another look at it didn't know if it was the official that knocked it or it was sam smith that knocked it loose but sets up a third down and three and either way that's going to be incomplete we'll go ahead and give sam smith a credit on uh, the deflection there Look at all the bodies up at the line of scrimmage for Archibald, smelling out run. Yeah, Wasian trying to match. Go right with Dominic, and it looks like he's going to be shy of the first down. Football or a uh, helmet's going to pop off at the end of that one. There's a lot of hitting going on there. It's going to be Dominic. And big fourth down. That might change what the Blue Streaks are going to do because they'll have to play without him, and the punt team will come on on the field. Yeah, it's a good decision. Go ahead and punt the football. How about the play by Justin Duncan? 45 tackles on the year. Maybe none bigger than that one right there to stop Carson Dominic. Sad that the helmet popped off, but it did give us a chance to see that beautiful hair on Carson Dominic. The mullet is back. Creighton Curran, top punter in the NWOAL, averaging 44 yards kick. Stands back at his own 31-yard line. He courts that one, but it's blocked. That one's going to bounce backward, picked up by the Indians, and they're going to have it inside their own 20-yard line. Yeah, we were at practice yesterday, and we saw him working on the pump block, and it's Xavier Martinez that comes free on that left-hand side of the defense. Watch him use that left hand, get it free, and then that wherewithal to get up and pick up the football and advance it. Almost a scoop and score for the X-Man. Martinez, fantastic special teams play. Indians will have this one deep in Archibald territory. The Blue Streak 15, you see there in their Northwest State Community College scoreboard. 8.38 to go in opening quarter, and how big would this be? The Indians are able to stick this in and get the early lead. Have heard most of the week that uh, they come in as probably the underdog. And I got bunched to the left, single receiver on the right-hand side, that's Smith. Parsons, a quarterback, he's gonna roll. Trying to find someone, fires for the end zone. That one's going to be incomplete. Throwing in a double coverage, looking for, is that Rodriguez? I'm sorry, Ethan Borton. Yeah, he's trying to hit Borton on a seven route, a flag route to the back corner of the end zone. Archibald schooled it out really well. Saw the stacked formation to their right-hand side. Had the number of personnel that you need. They were good discipline in their zone drops. Fantastic work by Bainfield, number 16, playing that corner. Might be the biggest corner in Northwest Ohio with his size. Bring up second and 10. And Bainfeld, six foot four. You don't see many corners at six foot four. Height is gonna come in handy tonight. 
There's a man in motion. They'll throw out to him. It's Armstrong, and that is going to go for little to no gain. That one read well by the Archibald defense. Let's see if it's a backward throw inside fake. This is not a football team that likes to run the football, so Archibald doesn't commit to it. Yeah, it's a backwards throw to Armstrong. I wonder if they're going to be setting up a double pass off of that later in the game. Loss of one on the play brings up third and 11 from the 16-yard line. Yeah, Ryan Friend leads this Wauseon offense with 162 yards rushing. So play action pass, not a big thing that teams have to worry about. Parsons looking to throw under pressure. He's going to take off and run now, has some room, and he's going to take a hit as he goes out of bounds inside the 10-yard line, close to the five. We do have a penalty flag down. Yeah, usually that's an indication of hold back there. Great move by Parsons to get himself free. We have a flag on the play. Now the official telling everyone where the flag is at. Oh, I think it might have been one of the other boys in stripes unaware that there was a flag. So you're going to take 10 yards from there. Or you're going to take what would be fourth down. So an interesting decision here. Well, don't forget. Rodriguez, pretty good kicker as well. So he got a 42-yard field goal on the year. So it's got to be in the thinking of Coach Dominic. You take the yards, push him back. That's exactly what Archibald will do. So it, it turns into a 16-yard penalty since the quarterback was scrambling the hold even deeper into the backfield. It's 10 yards from the infraction. Uh, this would be horrible for Wasian if they squander this opportunity after the block punt. Third down and forever. Officially third and 28. Parsons rolls, fires on the run, fires complete Sam Smith. He's out of bounds, still well short of the first down at about the 20. Now they're going to move it up, mark it about the 19. So you're looking from here about a 36, 37 yard field goal. And that is the call as here comes Rodriguez. Yeah, when we were at practice yesterday, we saw him make it from about 45. He's got a, a plenty strong leg to get it done. So officially 36 yards the distance. Holds down, kick on its way high, kick, and it is good. So Wasion able to strike first. Rodriguez with a 36-yard field goal gives the Indians the early lead here on WOSN. Three nothing, Wasion with the uh, lead as they got the uh, early uh, field goal, took advantage of the blocked punt. It's important that they came away with points there, especially after the big holding penalty. Good call by Coach Sean Moore, head coach and play caller. Had a little comeback route to Sam Smith getting back in field goal range. Mason Rodriguez, kicking off Rodriguez a high Indian. kick. This one a little deeper than he thought. It's going to be taken back into his end zone as end having zone to take a step back into his end, end zone to field that was... I believe Nathan Juarez, number six. We take a look at something. What do you got here, Miles? Well, it's a 4-2-5 kind of alignment. Uh, when you're going to have three guys deep, and you're going to have the guys going out to the flats, something that Archbold is going to use. You get uh, more guys in the secondary. You have five guys. That's going to cause a little bit of confusion for that Wasion offense. You saw a little bit of it in that first drive. Blue Streaks start this drive from their own 20. Brenner. Rolls, Kane fires, pass is complete. Devin and Devin Morris will have a first down up to the 35. Good decision by Brenner. I thought he had Benfeld open right there, but he says, now I'm going to take some bigger yardage. Waits for the drag to open up. Hits Morris coming up from the left hand side of the offense for a first down. That'll loosen up that Wasion secondary who's been crowding the line of scrimmage, anticipating run. Gain of 15. Another first down. Okay, Brenner, the ball Brenner, this might have been a broken play, so he'll get out to the 40. Wasian tackled by Tyson Rodriguez. 
That's Rodriguez coming up again from the secondary. Second uh, on the team, and or third on the team in uh, tackles. And there's uh, something that we'll see when Wasiana's offense, that under route, you see the cross on the X. That'll be Jude Armstrong a lot of times. They'll make the linebackers have to set, play close to the line of scrimmage. Gain of five now, second and five Marzi back Dominic to Walker. Dominic. He's going to cut up field and gets tripped up. Be just shy of the first down. A much better job Union. early in this football game by Wasian playing the run a year ago. It was a combination of DJ Newman and Carson Dominic that just chewed up all kinds of yardage. Wasian a little more stingy this year. Third down coming up here, third and about three. Streaks now we have the tight end and the H-back now will have early movement. It's going to be a false start. Illegal procedure was called on the dead ball foul against the Blue Street. Third and three turns into third and eight. Looked like the left-hand side of the offensive line couldn't hold the water. Third and three and third and eight, much different call. As you see Brenner yeah. go over to the sideline to get the call from Coach Dominic. Wasian showed is going to be man coverage. See if they stick with it. Penalty moves the ball back to the 37 yard line. Yeah, you see how close Rodriguez is at free safety. It's man. Brenner looking to throw again. Can't find Game anyone Brenner's at first. Pass. Comes back to the near sideline. Official is going to come in, rule that a caught pass. Hauled in there by Carter Bainfeld. Really good job by Brenner. We talked about his mobility in the pregame. Late uh, pressure by Chance Snow, takes him to the ground, but he throws through the contact. If you're gonna play man coverage, you gotta take away the short routes. Bainfeld was able to beat Jude Armstrong that time. Picked up 10 there, it's a first down out to the 47 yard line. Brenner's gonna keep that a little option action as he'll get into Wasion territory before he's brought down. Well, how many times in the last three years do we see DJ Newman run that exact same play? It's a staple of the Archbold offense. Kate Brenner runs it effectively for positive yardage on first down. Pick up four to get into Archbold territory to the 49-yard line. Second and six as we get halfway through this opening quarter. Brenner once again in a shotgun goes with three receivers. Takes back momentarily now with a little bit more time. Looks to throw. Trying to get a receiver open. That one just overthrown. Looking for Lucas Dominic. Lucas Dominic, who's got some nice speed on the perimeter. Broke off his route when he saw his quarterback leave the pocket. Did what he's supposed to do. Go vertical on the sideline. Tight little window, though. Brenner wasn't able to fit it. So far in this football game, partner, Separation has been kind of tough vertically for this Archbold receiver group. Third down coming up here for the Blue Streaks. It's like Terry Lynn, defense corner for Wasian, dialing up some pressure. A little bit more coming here. Brenner trying to throw this one. That one is complete. As it comes out. Caught by Lucas Dominic. Yeah, it looks like it's enough for first down. And Dominic had trouble on the last pass, couldn't reach it. This time in the flat. He's going to be open right over the top of Kessler. Drops it into a bucket. Nice throw by Brenner. Good route by Dominic to the press off, then cut out. Give himself the separation on Kessler. Picked up eight, which is enough for the first down. Back to Dominic on the ground. Carson Dominic still chugging as that diesel power is going to get about nine and a half. On that run right there. The big diesel truck off left tackle gets a great block by Morris. You see it at the top right there. And then Chase Cornell, the senior guard, pulls around. A little power, power O. If you're a fan of Marty Schottenheimer, that was his favorite play. Power O off tackle. Keep running it until they stop it. A gain of nine brings up second and one from the 32. Archibald continuing to go with that power formation with that H back. Brenner is going to roll that way. Gets a block. Gives him extra time. Flag down at the end of this one. As a pass was caught for a first down. We'll have to see what the penalty is. Yeah, they bring Kovar in a blitz. You see it right there. The left hand of Burroughs, number 54. Trying to protect the A gap to his left hand side where Kovar had blitzed. 
And they're going to say they can't do that. A little creative blocking by the center. I'm going to walk it off. It's going to hurt Archbowl's offensive series here. Here's the call from our official. Back to the 49. Second down. Yeah, Wasian bringing pressure from the inside. And that's just allowing Brenner to get outside. Might want to change it, start bringing pressure from the out, make him stay in the pocket. Brenner looks more comfortable on the roll. And now Archbold will take a timeout. So we'll take this opportunity to tell you the free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, more scores in the WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or the Android Play Store. I also want to tell you that our title sponsor for our broadcast tonight between Archibald and Wauseon is the State Bank. Invest in the Northwest and West Central Ohio. Skilled objective and caring financial planners. Now, you've been around the NWAL for a long time, right? I have. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. See the back stripe of Archibald's helmet, how the lightning bolt goes away? Usually lightning bolts strike down, right? At one point in time, didn't the lightning bolt go the other way on their helmet? It was actually kind of the old San Diego Chargers that was on the side. Oh, okay. All right. Because I always thought lightning bolts should be going towards the ground, not away from the ground, but I don't know. It's not my helmet. Still pretty cool, though. Some of the best uniform combinations that you'll see. Blue and yellow and red and white and gray, always great combinations. So it uh, it evokes a lot of emotion on a lot of sides. Second and long, coming up here after the timeout. Brenner in trouble, and he's going to go down back in his own 42, and now a late flag. And we've seen some of this in the professional ranks, and we'll see if it's going to carry down here to this level. Yeah, Justin Duncan's going to keep working. I'm going to say, yep, look him twist ahead and grab the helmet right in front of the white hat. It's going to get called, and that's a shame. Because great effort got him to sack, but the penalty is going to negate it. Now the officials have to talk about this one. So it does, if it came at the end of the play, and that's what the officials are talking about, is it 15 yards from the original line of scrimmage, 15 yards from where the infraction occurred? Well, you see the Wasian staff, they're upset. I would be too if I were them. But what they couldn't see is our view mm -hmm. where the head, it's almost like a bulldog. And the old pro wrestling, take the head, slam it into the mat. Yeah, they couldn't see as their own guy trying to twist the head off of the quarterback. What was it, Sam White? They used to say, hey, they hit my, my quarterback in the head. He's going to be okay, but it is a penalty. Please call it. Penalty is, uh, walked off to the the penalty is assessed. It will be third and 12 for the Blue And it will move the ball. They will say the end. So they're going to count the play, I believe, here, partner. Yeah, that's the right call because it's after the play, after the sack occurred, I guess. <laughs> Almost, it wasn't as bad as Tom Brady a week ago, right? Where you got the penalty for not putting a pillow down as you gently set him on the ground. Archibald now with the Wasion 43, still third and long. Yeah, man, man coverage, it's off man. And they're gonna get a false start. Faking the blitz, induce the false start. Illegal procedure, dead ball so will continue. So, and so what we know is that everywhere Miles and I in our road show that is WOSN football. <laughs> Don't say road show. People are gonna start showing up with the antiques wanting us to uh, <laughs> Take a look at them. There's there's yellow hankies that follow. Yeah, the Ooh. circus is in town. You know how I know? I saw the two clowns. <laughs> Don't say that about Rick and Curtis. Our camera guys are doing a great job. Uh, One thing that's evident: Wasian. They said they're going to bring pressure tonight. Man coverage again. Here comes another blitz. Brenner, rolling, hey, fires, back. passes, hey. gonna Complete be caught. Still shy of the first down. See what the Blue Streaks elect to do. Fourth and about six, seven here. Yeah, watch Carter Bainfeld working the outside. He's going to run Sam Smith off and then come back. He's going to keep his feet in bounds. Use that 6 4 height. Hold on to the football. Great route. Fourth down and five now. You're on the plus side. No doubt about it. You're going to go. Picked up about 11 on the pass play. Call it fourth and six. You see there in our Northwest State Community College scoreboard, 317 to go. Opening quarter, Blue Streaks. 
running out of time here. Play clock at five. Trying to get set in a hurry. Brenner looking to fire, has pressure in his face. Fires that one, trying to stretch out. And pass is gonna be incomplete. What an effort, but just short looking for Chase Miller. Oh, it's a heck of a design. They take Dominic out of the backfield, make it think it's gonna be a bubble screen to him. They're gonna hitch, then go. Take advantage of the aggressiveness on Smith on coverage. Just a little bit too far for Chase Miller. Would have been a heck of a catch, but goes off his hands. And if you're a Wasian, when that ball is in the air, you go, uh-oh. And then when he drops it, you feel good. You got the ball back again. Let's get cooking. Indians will have it at their own 37. Couple of good defensive uh, stops. Got the uh, blocked punt. And now the ball on downs. Here's a pass. That one fired right into the hands. Ethan Borton it took him straight to the ground. That ball fired so hard. Archwell is going to have to do a much better job on the right-hand side defensively, keeping the quarterback Trey Parsons in the pocket. It's already the third time he's been able to leak out of the pocket to the left-hand side. They're trying to go vertical to Sam Smith, but that late coverage played over top of him at 4-2-5, playing heavy with Trey Parsons early in this football game. Gain of eight brings up second and two. Parsons fires quickly. It's the screen set here. Smith had a blocker set up. Smith's going to spin out a one tackler with a stiff arm still on his feet. And finally, he's going to go down inside the 40, inside the 35. Officials still moving forward. We take a look at the replay. Uh, almost deflected at the line of scrimmage by Ripke. But look at that stiff arm, and that's not a stiff arm against just a little sixth grader. That's Carson Dominic he's throwing to the ground. And then right there, Miller, get off of me. Smith says, come get some. I'll deliver another stiff arm. Who wants it? 22 yards on the pass. It's a first down to the Archibald 33. Now they're going to call it 32. We'll give him an extra yard. Quick pitch coming here to the near sideline, Ryan Friend. And he's going to be forced out of bounds after a minimal game. Yeah, Car Benfeld, number 16, he's playing a heck of a football game early in this uh, game. Number 16 comes up again on another tackle. That was what a run play, something you don't see a whole lot of out of this Wasi on offense. Friend gets a couple yards. We said early in this game, leads the team in rushing with only 162 yards. But he does have four TDs, but this is a team that makes their living throwing the football, and why not when you have four unbelievable receivers like they have? Yeah, they made no bones about it. That was the plan the entire year. Second and nine after the one-yard pass. This is kind of the extension of that run, getting out to their playmakers, getting out to Jude Armstrong. Armstrong is going to be corralled down near the first down marker. Well, let's go back to our checks of the game. Number two was perimeter pressure, right? At first, they ran the quick screen outside to Sam Smith, and now Jude Armstrong, they're dominating the perimeter, applying pressure to that Archibald defense. Gain of nine is enough for the first down to the 22-yard line. Second time, Wasihan's been able to drive on this Archibald defense. Smith goes in motion, swing it out to him, using his speed to the near sideline, still on his feet. He takes a blow as he goes out of bounds. Well, John between rivals continues on. Yeah, just kind of telling him, right, we're, we're going to be playing all game long. You're not getting us this year. That's just a bubble screen back to the other side off the motion. And Gomez, number 22, makes a cardinal sin, goes inside the block. You're the squeeze defender. you got to force that receiver to come back inside your buddies. Smith gets outside of him. And Miles kind of hit it on it. Forgot to mention our pregame show. This meeting, the 68th all-time. Blue Streaks leading the series 34-32-1. and one. And as Miles had uh, mentioned in our pregame, also if you follow him on social media, had a little bit about it. Senior class with the Blue Streaks never lost to Wasian. As Archibald's won five in a row. Parsons, another completed pass. Armstrong looking for the end zone. He's going to lose the football. And it looks like this one's going to go out the back of the end zone. As Dominic, Carson Dominic, the bottom of the pile has it. And it looks like Archibald is going to come away with this one. And what a mistake for the Indians. Let's take a look. Does he cross the goal line as the ball comes out? Stiff arm to get some free. He's going to, oh, the ball is out. It's Steven Diller that caused it. Great play by Diller. 
Shades of the fumble for the Browns and Broncos years ago. Diller, what a play. Saves that Archbold defense in a big way. Oh, partner, write that down. That might be a moment in this football game. If Archbold comes back to win it, they can say it was because of Diller's play at the goal line. Ends up going as a touchback. What a play. Streaks take over from their own 20. Quick pitch again. That Wasi on pressure all over Carson Dominic. He's going to take a big loss. As Zayn Kessler absolutely blows it up. Number 34. You'll see him down here playing the left end. He's going to run through the block of Dominic. This bench presses him into Dominic. Allows his buddies like Snow to rally up and get him to the ground. How much you bench? Well, how much does Dominic weigh? Because I can bench more than that. What a play by Zayden Kessler. Aiden uh, Leininger also in on that stop. Loss of six. It's second and 16 back of the 14-yard line. Archibald with the difference between the play clock and game clock will have to run one more play here in our opening quarter. But before we they do, the whistles, and it looks like more issues for the Blue Streaks. Now already the third Please. false start in this football here. game false for Archbold. Archbold. They are going the wrong way. You wonder if they might start using some tempo or just say, hey, let's let's get on the last scrimmage and go. They are taking a lot of time. Sometimes that is gonna be your enemy for guys that can't stay set. And it's gonna move Archibald back inside the 10. So reset the play clock. So and the streaks in no hurry the now. We'll let the play. first quarter clock run out. So a surprise after our first 12 minutes. Could have been worse. Three nothing after one. We'll take a break here at WOSN. Three nothing or score. Wasion with the lead over uh, Archibald here after one quarter of play, but we were mere inches away from a ten nothing game. Jude Armstrong working his way into the end zone, lost the football as it was uh, poked free by Stephen Diller. Yeah, it looked like he was going to transfer to kind of dive into the end zone, and Diller right at that moment knocked it free and. If you're Wasian, you got to be excited because you, you've kind of dominated this football game, but at the same time, you look at the scoreboard and you're like, uh-oh, it's only 3-0. Yeah, Carson Dominic able to fall on top of it. Carson so Dominic go to Carson here. Dominic here. He'll carry out to about Chance the 15-yard line. Yeah, played really well by Chance Snow, number 51. The defensive end on the right-hand side going to work his way down the line of scrimmage. You see Wasian thought the ball came out again, trying to make their case, but the official said, no, Dominic was down. So third and 15. Yeah, Wasian looks like they're gonna stay locked up in man, no free help. Yeah, they're gonna run across the formation with it. Four receivers now this side. Brenner looking to throw. Still stays behind, fires that one, incomplete one. Close to Xavier Martinez, you know the problem is Martinez plays for the other team. I like the design by Archibald, they want four receivers and they're gonna take the tight end, rake them out to all the way across the field, that was Morris, but Xavier Martinez has showed up again, had the coverage on Morris, made it a tough throw. Xavier Martinez, he's put his stamp on this football game early. Creighton Kern back on to punt once again. For the Indians. Might remember how the first one went. That one blocked by the Indians, led to a field goal. This snap. one snapped over his head, out of the back of the end zone, and it's now 5 0 Wasian. Goes out of the end zone on the well, it's the punt game that has been giving fits for Archbold. And we have that traditional 5 0 score in football, right? How many football games have you seen 5 0? How about. Was it uh, Iowa? Was it Iowa, South Dakota State, 7 3? 7 3, and it was two safeties. Two safeties yeah. and a field goal. Yeah. Well, coaches never complain about how you get points, they just want points. So, a safety, you can dance if you want to, you can leave yourself behind, but the safety dance gets you two points. 5 0 here. What? What an odd game we've had so far this evening. Well, it's been an exciting football game, though. It has been. Both teams playing extremely hard. We've seen all kinds of plays that have been befuddling. 
Hey, check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. It's going to come uh, up, and uh, the WOSN schedule will be uh, more important than ever this uh, upcoming week or two. You've got sectional soccer, sectional volleyball, football wrapping up its regular season. Doesn't mean we stop after next week, though. We've got some... Uh, Playoff football coming your way. I had a chance to see Tiffin Calvert volleyball against Liberty Benton volleyball this week. Oh, Lord, that Tiffin Calvert team. If someone beats them in a tournament, I'll be amazed. They were absolutely dominant against a really good Liberty Benton team. For those of you that might not be aware, this year, for the first two rounds of high school football playoffs, everyone will play on Friday night, and then they will split once they get to the Jude neutral Armstrong sites on the field. Uh, turf. Here's Jude Armstrong. On the return, one man to beat, he's to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, in. And just like that, the Indians add on to their lead. No, Jude Armstrong, we talked in our pregame. Special team smarts by Archbold. Well, you kick it to Armstrong, averages 23 a return, but he hits that middle wedge right there and just bursts right through it. Katie barred the door, another easy score for Wasion. Kicker to beat, no problem for Armstrong. Now, this is where he made me nervous. Watch, he's gonna take the football. He's gonna extend it up in the air as he crosses the goal line. Hold on to the football, young man. Jude Armstrong does. Huge play for the Indians. 77 yards on the kick return following the uh, safety as the, the best part of high school football is on the quick exchange, quick score when everyone's playing all units. Got to run a couple guys on late as the extra point is good. And now 12 nothing. we take a look once again, partner. Yeah, Armstrong is nothing but middle return. Now remember, on a safety, you can punt it or kick it off. And Archibald elected to kick it off. Kind of outkicked his coverage. One man to beat was Kern. Tried to get the ankle of Armstrong, couldn't get it done. Jude Armstrong's been a big play machine in his career for Wasion. None bigger than that one. A huge kickoff return. 12 0 on our scoreboard tonight, brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Northwest State, get a great education from a dedicated faculty, preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. And of course, our title sponsor. For our broadcast tonight between Archibald and Wasion is the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio. Skilled objective and caring financial planners. Now you got to feel good for Jude Armstrong, though. You know, moments ago had the costly fumble right at the goal line. It kind of atones for that. No one will ever talk about that one now if they go on to win this football game. They'll just talk about the kick, kickoff return for a touchdown. So Rodriguez has this one teed up on the 40 yard line. Streaks are going to have to lick their wounds a little bit. Not what a lot of blue and gold fans expected. This one on a hop is going to be fielded. Shy of the goal line. And more trouble for Archibald. As this one was fielded by, is that Suarez, number six? Yeah, you're going to see him plant on the wrong foot. And then he's going to stumble and go down. I don't think he was going to go anywhere anyhow. The coverage unit was right on top. Bad starting position again for this Archbold team. That was Tate Weiss, number 35, that got down there to make the tackle. That's why you come up and catch the football. Once it hits the ground, you're in big trouble. You don't yeah. know where it's going to roll. I don't know if he thought he was, maybe he was better off letting that one go, and then it just died. So here's Carson Dominic, grabbed from behind by someone slowed up. He'll pick up about five on the run there. He's gotten some yardage in this football game, but the big chunks haven't been there. They've been the three, the four, the five variety. He hasn't really had that big burst for plus 10 yardage. But you see the tempo now of Archibald picking up. Streaks down a couple of scores. So the good news, the silver lining for Archibald when you take a look at the grand scheme. It's really two scores. Here's a pass, that one thrown to the far sideline. It looks like it's gonna be Jostled loose late, and they're going to rule that incomplete as Armstrong wins the battle with Bainfeld. I like Armstrong. He helps out, <laughs> helps out broadcasters 
figure out who made the play right. Takes the hands, puts them in the air, waves them off. It was me that knocked the ball loose. He came out of a cannon to knock that ball out of Bainfeld's hands. Huge third down for this Archibald offense. They gotta stay on the, on the field. Makes it third and five, backed up at their own 15 yard line. The Wauseon defensive coach has gotta be pretty fired up their effort so far. Yeah, Terry Lynn doing a great job applying pressure on almost every single down. Dominic can get it once again. He's gonna have the first down. Barrels over people. He's gonna carry three defenders out across the 35. I think he crossed up this Wauseon defense. It's gonna be a counter play, bringing the right hand side offensive line around. That's gonna be Cornell and Dickman. Block down, kick out, counter tray action. And the diesel truck keeps rumbling. Huge first down for Archibald. Now there's the big run that Miles had talked about, a gain of 22. Now looking to throw, Renner rolls. Still, and he's gonna be tracked down from behind. Looks like he got maybe a yard. We take a look at the replay. Now it's gonna be Duncan who had the sack, but the personal foul earlier in this game. He's just going to keep working. This is more than an effort sack by Duncan. Well, you're actually going to say he got two yards. Yeah, but good job by Duncan chasing him down, and better job by coverage of that Wauseon offense, or secondary rather. The stretch verticality offense of Archibald has been shut down by the secondary of Wauseon. Generous spot maybe to get him the extra yard. At any rate, second and eight. Got a great trivia question coming up here when we get a chance, if you know your history of NWOAL football coaches, Dominic's gonna plow forward again, close to another first down. And a good play calling right there, come back to it, right? That was a play, two plays a go, run the counter tray, got big yardage for 22, don't forget about it, come back to it, another first down for Archibald. They'll move the sticks out to the 47 yard line. That's another first down for the Blue Street. First and 10, Archibald from their own 47 You always amaze me with the trivia questions that you come up with. This one, this one's a doozy. I, I took me forever to figure out anything about it. You guys are gonna love it. Brenner is gonna keep it himself this time. He might have tripped over his own feet close to another first down as he'll get into Wauseon territory. Yeah, watch Hayden Dickman, 73, lead the way for his quarterback. Just blows up a guy. And then, this is why you love offensive linemen, right? He helps his quarterback. Come on, come on, buddy, let's go. I'm gonna block for you, then I'm gonna pick you up. Some of the best people in the world are offensive linemen. Gain of nine to get him to the Wauseon 44 yard line. Second and short yard. Brenner was tackled that time by Austin Kovar. Streaks taking their time. See that pressure coming. Dominic, Dominic working right side, shuffles his feet, does have the first down Chance as we'll get inside the 45, the 44, as uh, we'll see if we can get you that trivia question now. Two Hall of Fame coaches, one in the College Football Hall of Fame, one in the Naismith and College uh, Basketball Halls of Fame, spent the early parts of their careers at NWOAL schools. Can you name the two famous coaches? Can we give him a clue? Because I have a pretty good one. You want to give him a clue? Um, I can tell you, what, what clue do you want to give? It ties to Finley. There are ties to Finley. Okay. I know this one because I worked for the guy who was the defensive coordinator for the guy that was from Finley. Okay. When, they are, when they are winning national titles down there. Okay. So, yeah, the uh, college football coach, we can tell you, spent some time as an assistant and does have four national championships. And the basketball coach, I, I'm first of all, when I was doing some research and doing this, was unaware that there were different Naismith and college basketball halls of fame. The College Basketball Hall of Fame located in Kansas City. So this is going to be measured, and that is the reason – for the stoppage right now on that run by Dominic. So it's third listed right now in the down box, third and short, and so we're gonna take a look here. I'm gonna say he got it by the nose of the football. Didn't need to get much. It looks like the nose of the football is on the chalk at the uh, 43 yard line, and they're going to mark him. Like I said, short, just, just short. a little bit. Third and, short. Little third bit. and they're gonna generously say, 
You, you have to, by rule, say third and one, <laughs> but let's call it what it is, third and a couple of inches. A pro Basketball Hall of Fame to continue what you're saying. Springfield, right? In, in yep. Springfield. Not the pro, it is just the Basketball Hall of Fame. Oh, it is the Basketball. Yeah, you're right. Not you're right. pro Basketball yeah. Hall of Fame, yeah. but yeah, in Springfield, Massachusetts. It's kind of odd that there's two. You think anyone that's into college would be in the other right. one, right? So, uh, third down, Carson Dominic this time does have the first down, knifes up field as he continues to carry defenders, and he's going to get to about the 34. Now we talked about Carlos Hyde and uh, John Riggins with a feed. I'll give you another one. Very reminiscent of Jerome Bettis right there. Looked like he was going to bounce the C, but the nimble feet of the diesel truck allows him to come back to B gap and get the first down. First down for the Blue Streaks as uh, they've now gotten to their deepest penetration for Wasion to the Indian 34, Brenner, more pressure, and he's going to be thrown down back at the 40-yard line. Looks like a clean play, wrapping him up that time, Chance Snow, and a big sack. And watch Chance Snow working close to you right there with the rip move, gets underneath, runs by, and then right there gets his shoulder pad, smartly grabs the arms of the quarterback as well. Chance Snow, three and a half sacks coming into the night, picks up a big run right there. A loss of six at second and 16, back of the 40. A chance, no, just he's a backfield magnet. Four and a half sacks now, 16 tackles for loss. That's impressive stuff. Indian team coming along since that loss to Liberty Center. Second down throw again, coming to the sideline. That one is caught. It's Chase Miller, who then goes straight out of bounds. And that will get some of the penalty yardage, or some of the sack yardage, excuse me. He'll get it out to the 31, it looks like. It'll be third and seven. Now you're thinking four down territory here for Archbold. Chase Young, or Chase Miller rather, 18 catches, 265 yards coming into the night. Second leading receiver on the Blue Streaks. Archibald did that uh, in the opening quarter. Reached right around this part of the field. And now here's a good throw downfield. A one-on-one -on -one coverage. That one's going to be broken up. Incomplete. What a job out there again. Jude Armstrong. And Jude Armstrong, who loves to give the airplane signal after he makes a play. Watch this, good jump ball, 50-50 ball. Armstrong, fantastic work, turning around, seeing the football, plays the man, and then plays the football. Good ball skills by Jude Armstrong. Hey, he's given up a couple of inches out to Carter Bainfeld. For that jumping ability, he's gonna make that up, and it is now fourth down. Yeah, take a look at this, crazy formation. Pass middle of the field, that one's going to be caught big. Fourth down conversion there for Archbold. This was the old Bill Belichick play where you take a tackle, put him outside, and put a, a receiver at a tackle spot, and Devin Morris fools everybody, goes up the seam. They had taken Dickman all the way out to the right hash, usually an offensive tackle playing out there, fooled the Wasion defense. Great design by Archbold. Gain of 26 on fourth down makes it first and goal from the five. Brenner, not the greatest snap, but it's Dominic fighting forward, and he is going to be at about the one yard line. <laughs> Did you go back to that last play? Did you see Dickman put his hands up at the hash, like throw me to football? Son, you're wearing 73. <laughs> all, all part of I'm lined up as a receiver. It's the only time I get a chance. Uh, in about 20 years at a reunion, it'll be like, remember they threw me the ball to the hash against right. Wasion? Right, mark that to two, second and goal. Morris stays in, kind of an H-back lined up to the right side. Dominic getting in, and he's got his 22nd rushing touchdown to the year. And running behind his center, Burroughs gets himself a pancake, allows Dominic to get the easy score. Down on the right-hand side, see Burles right there. Great job, took his man straight to the ground, and then he's gonna go straight celebrate with his fullback. The diesel truck scores again. 14 plays, 90 yards. As Kern has the extra point, is good, he had it hit at the line, and it's gonna hit and go through. Archibald Athletic Director Alan Gladio will help out the call <laughs> sure there. He sure did. You don't see that every day. It's the crossbar and bounces over. 
All you gotta do is be lucky sometimes. I wondered if a little bit of a deflection is Wastiana had some pressure on that kick. Yeah, big answer for the Blue Streaks. We'll take a timeout here on WOSN. What an answer for the Wasi, or from, I'm sorry, for the Archibald Blue Streaks as they get set to kick off to Wasi on 14 plays, 90 yards, 542 the drive. It ends. Carson Dominic, his 22nd rushing touchdown of the year, comes from two yards out, puts the Blue Streaks on the board. Now 12 to 7. No, that's not two touchdowns and a couple of missed extra points for Wasi on. But it all adds up the same. It's Kern. A liner, this one fielded at about the 10 yard line. Armstrong with that kickoff return, and it looks like he may go for two to the far sideline. One man to beat Kern is going to wrap him up inside the 35. Oh, don't kick it to him a third time, right? Oh, kicked it to Armstrong, almost made him pay again. I was surprised that they kicked in the middle of the field. Armstrong this time is going to be a left hand return. Boy, when he gets to the hash, he just turns it on. See a great left wall out there. Tremendous block by Rodriguez to seal it on the outside. Kern barely gets him on the hip right there, gets the foot. You see Coach Thomas right there leading the charge on the sideline. He's excited and why not? At Jude first, Armstrong makes I, plays. I saw the gesture with the arm and I thought it was the throw of flag, but I just think that was pure unadulterated excitement. Indians are going to have a great field position. The Archibald 32. However, we're going to start with a penalty, and the Indians will be backed up five yards. Do you think officials, before they get together at the game, are like, hey, what's our call tonight? What do you guys want to specialize in? Hey, guys. Let's let's go false start tonight. I like it. I like it. TV's here, so if you want to get your faces on TV a little bit, Throw some flags. Let's get some huddles around. They have to. They have to put us on. There's no point. Uh, we're just teasing you, zebras. We'll Take hijack. We'll right. hijack this whole game. <laughs> yeah, it's already what the sixth false start in this football game. Guys, hold your water on the last scrimmage. Don't let them call it. Indians are now backed up to 37 before we start. Parsons looks to throw under pressure. Continues to back up. Fires this one. That one's nearly intercepted. That one's going to be deflected, looking for Tyson Rodriguez. This was a dangerous throw by Parsons. He's going to throw it late, never sees Juarez, number six, break on it. Parsons, when he leaves the pocket, loves to go left. You see Juarez almost gets it as he's trying to hit Rodriguez with the pass. Tony Vasquez might have got away with a hold there as well, but at any rate, it's incomplete. Look, partner, as a former lineman, I got to correct you. There's no such thing as a hold. It's creative blocking. Creative blocking. My right. apologies. My apologies to linemen everywhere. I'm one of you. <laughs> Four receivers set once again. Long throw coming to the near side from that far hash. That one's going to be incomplete. A great pressure applied by Dickman, number 73. Hayden Dickman gets in the backfield, forces Parsons to throw it before he wants it. It'll be third and 15 for the third and 15. Yeah, it's been, it seemed like forever since this Wasian offense was on the field. They don't want to turn the ball back over to Archbold. And they had the fumble into the end zone inside the final minute of the opening quarter. Archbold then had the drive in that last minute with a punt that went out the end zone. The kickoff was returned for a touchdown. Archibald went on a five and a half minute drive and timeout now we're gonna have a timeout. timeout so with the timeout, that'll give us the opportunity to give you that answer. Hopefully we've given you enough time for our trivia question of the night. Again, the uh, question, two Hall of Fame coaches, one for football, one for basketball. Spent the early part. I oh, I wanted to say began their careers, and then I realized that that is incorrect, and I'll tell you why. Mm, okay. Spent the early part of their careers at NWOAL schools. Who are the coaches? Is that what you came up with, Miles? I had Dick Stram. I, Harold Anderson I, I whiffed on, but I knew Dick Stram, so I worked for Ray Kwiatkowski when he was a head football coach at uh, Bedford High School, and he was uh, Dick Stram's uh, uh, defensive coordinator down there. Dick Stram started the program at Lakota, hmm. came to Bryan. He made his way eventually the defensive coordinator, University of Toledo. 
and then went on to a long and distinguished career at Finley where he won four NAIA national championships. And then Harold Anderson. I believe uh, most people of a certain age have probably seen a basketball game, even if you're not a Bowling Green fan. Uh, mm. Probably been to a tournament basketball game right. in a place called Anderson Arena. Right, right. Well, Harold Anderson began at Wauseon, moved on to, I believe, Wait, ended up actually he coached 10 years at the University of Toledo and was hired away from Toledo to his career at Bowling Green. One of the early, and it might have been first, is problems. Balls loose. Parsons. Might have, did he fall on top of it? We're going to take a look at the replay. Yeah, corner blitz are going to bring Bainfield on the outside. Surprises Wasian. Ball comes loose. Parsons lucky to fall on it. I don't know how. Yeah, it was Wyatt Ripke that poked that free, number 53. A great call, though, by Jack Downey, defensive coordinator, down up a corner blitz. Wasian well, going to have to punt. That's a good thing because Jude Armstrong on a wheel route was all by himself on that far sideline. Parsons had another tick, he might have been able to find him. Drive goes back 12 yards, punt snap, one hops. Punt, by the way, new punter in there as well, as this one is gonna be fair caught. Yes. That's why you have an athlete back there though. It, Rodriguez, punt, taking over to punting duty this year, or this week, Elijah McLeod had handled it all year long, till this week, no longer with the program. But Rodriguez, good athlete, and we already know he's got a great foot, so let him take over the punting job. Streets take over. 4.02 to play, opening half on our Northwest State Community College scoreboard, and now the officials. We have an issue with, we have an issue with one of the officials. We got a, we have cramping problems with the zebras. I hope he's okay. Maybe let him lay that back on the ground and pull his toe, right, like the players do? That's right. Looks like he's all right. Trying to stretch something out. They're going to give the players a break. Sciatic. Or, That's maybe, what he's telling the guys. It's my sciatic. Maybe, I don't know, did he get tripped by someone on the sideline? So I'll give us, I guess, to finish the thought on uh, Harold Anderson saying that uh, coached uh, late, late, late 20s, early 30s, maybe 1932 at Wauseon. Went to wait, Toledo, and then uh, off to Bowling Green, where uh, ended up one of the uh, first big Carson winning coaches. Dominic first down run is Carson Dominic, as that pile just moves, and it's a first down out to the 35. That's Dickman and Cornell on the right hand side. They're going to bring around Whipke, Ripke and Siegel. It's that counter play that last drive, they got big yardage on. Mossiana has not had an answer to it. This Wauseon defense has been good all night long against the run, except for the last part of the last drive and early in this drive. They're going to have to button it down. Gain of 16 there. It's first and 10 from the 35. Brenner looks to throw. That one's going to be over the head of everybody incomplete. Yeah, Armstrong and Bainfeld, what a matchup on the outside. And Armstrong has brought his big time coverage skills with him tonight. Another pass defense for him. Brings up second and 10, stops the clock, 3.31 to go before halftime. Dick Vermeil always used to say, incomplete on first down, second down is going to be in a run 80% of the time. Let's see if it holds true here. Runner in the shotgun, it's two receivers to the near side, kind of rolls that way. Looking, looks like he was looking for the shovel pass, but instead fires it out. Nice job, Chase Miller staying in bounds, hauls it in for about five. Going to put Rodriguez, number nine, in a bind. He's playing the flat. Once the quarterback, Brenner, gets outside the pocket, he has to come up, thinking about run, and then Brenner just drops it over his head. Nice little touch pass into Miller. Gets him five yards, sets up third and five. Three receivers to that far side with the third down coming up. Brenner will release. The running back's gonna keep himself. He'll have a first down. He's gonna pay for it. Took a big hit. Ball comes loose in the end. Near official run again. You see from the bottom of your screen, said he was down. He's gonna go with a call. Sean Moore unhappy. He's working the official, by the way, did not make the call. We'll take a look and we see what happened here. Let's see if the knee goes down. Yeah, knees down. It's the right call. Good job by the side official to come up and let his buddies know. Good work by the officials. Getting a little help by Morris. Morris telling him that's down. The ball's down. 
and it was a counter play that they went back to that time. Empty backfield. They'll let the quarterback Brenner run it. Pick up seven on the run. It's a fresh set of downs near midfield. High snap, Brenner. Now he gets the option Carson pitch. Dominic Carson Dominic will get into Carson Indian Rodriguez territory before he's taken down. That'll pick up about four, maybe five. Now watch Rodriguez, number nine. He's going to fight off the block of Dominic. Going to use the left hand to fight off the block, use the right hand to make the tackle on Dominic. That is a tough play. Good job by Rodriguez. Indians, er, blue streaks going quick, already on the line. Trying to get Wasion reeling. Pass fired to the sideline. That one is caught for progress. Going to leave about a yard short for Bainfeld. Good timing. On the break, the quarterback Brenner releases on time. Anything a little bit longer, and Armstrong would have had a chance to make a, a play on it. Right to the 44, pick up four, third and one. Looking for a run to get the first down, but they're not going to get it. What a defensive play. Austin Kovar comes up with another big one. Now, leading tackler on this football team with 65 coming in tonight. You see why. He gets his hands on you. He makes the play. Kovar, big tackle for loss. Fourth down, huge play under two minutes in this half. You'd think every play in the playbook open here for fourth and two, but you would have thought that on third and one. No problem, though. You don't get it. You put Wasian in great position. Been plenty of time for the Indians. Two timeouts, minute 40. Dominic fighting. This one is going to be close as the officials come in. If the topside official spots it, I think they have it. This is great work by Wasian getting to the legs of Dominic, not letting him get started. Boy, that is about as close as you can get from our angle. The officials going to work in that one. They're going to check every blade of grass. And they are going to have to come in for a measurement. Oh, boy. This is going to be fun to watch this measurement, right? Have we ever had a starring roll of two sticks and a chain? <laughs> what do you think? They got it or, they, or sure? Ugh. I think they're, oh boy. I think he has it because the top side official spotted it. Coming in. Oh, they're gonna be short. Yeah, they the extra length of chain on that one. That was pulled. <laughs> Where the official came in, it didn't look like there was that much chain left and then found a room. What felt like another yard out of that one. Might want to check that and make sure that's 10 yards on that one. <laughs> it's not every day you stop. Carson Dominic on an inside run for short yardage. But that Wasi on defense, first on third down with a great tackle by Kovar. And then on fourth down, stopping him short. Now they got 137 to work with and two timeouts. See what they do is they come out in a four receiver set. Fake the handoff, pass goes to the far sideline. Armstrong, Armstrong, trying to get out of bounds. And it looks like he will successfully do so at about the 48-yard line. They had Juarez scoping on it, playing the flat. Came up, couldn't get to the feet of Armstrong as they stiff arm, got him away, got him five yards. But at least slowed him up enough for the rest of the Blue Streak defense to get there. Second and five from the 48, getting out of bounds, stops the clock, minute 29 to go. Northwest State Community College scoreboard. Archibald showing a little bit of pressure, backed out of it. Parsons gonna go for the home run ball. Tons of flags coming in as this one's gonna be incomplete. We'll see what the penalty is with the contact downfield. Maybe this pen, maybe this uh, replay will show it. Folks, if you have a flag at home, go ahead and throw it because everybody here did. I <laughs> think every single official threw it. There's one that flies by everybody. Yeah, it's gonna be a defensive hold against uh, Archbold. They're gonna say Bainfeld was a little bit too aggressive. And how about Armstrong? Is there a guy that is more animated on a football field than that guy? He let everybody know, you can't cover me. It's going to set up a first down inside of Archibald territory. For the Indians, the ball will be spotted at the Archibald 37-yard line. So they're going to move that to the Archibald 37. Big opportunity for the Indians, already up five, trying to stick one in with a minute 22 to go before halftime. 
I need about 10 more yards to give Rodriguez a legitimate shot at a field goal again. But they're Wasiak's, thinking bigger. Yeah, I don't think Wasian's thinking three right now. They'll settle for three, and they're always happy to put points on the board. Instead, they're going to go for a sack. Parsons nowhere to go with that one. He's dumped back into the 44. Top side, Hayden Dickman, 73. He's not going to get the sack, but because of his pressure, he's going to force it back inside to Ripke. Along with Siegel, they get the sack, and they're going to have a timeout. Big loss there back to the 44. Wasian moving backwards. This happened a couple of times here tonight, partner. Mm, sure, and, and, and timely sack though by that Archibald defense, and got it done with only four rushers. They didn't have to bring extra pressure. They had been showing bringing um, Devin Morris early in the drive from inside spot. Morris, a guy number 28, that they've been moving all the way around. He's played down. He's played linebacker tonight. Knows football. His dad played the University of Toledo. Good school. Yep. Played in the Canadian Football League, a little league that you love. But they played with 12 guys, and I guess his uncle played in the NFL. So well, there you go. I think they've talked some football in that household. A big night here. Once again, next week we wrap up the regular season at Edgerton. Bulldogs and Antwerp. I'm excited to see Edgerton. I've heard all about them, how they're playing good football. See what we got here in the old WOSN scores app. I can tell you in the GMC as we get back to action here. Parsons rolls all the way to the near sideline. That one nearly intercepted. That one went through two sets of blue streak hands before falling to the ground. Yeah, Chase Miller and Gomez collide at the same time, or else. Chase Miller would have had his fifth interception, a throw that Parsons probably shouldn't have made, but he was running out of territory and running out of time as Archibald brought a stunt and a double backer blitz to the top side. But Tenora leading Edgerton at the half, 17 to nothing. That's a game Edgerton has to win if they want to have a shot at the GMC title next week. Armstrong's going to go in motion. Instead, they'll throw the other way. Pass is complete. Logan Carroll back to the original line of scrimmage, and it's going to be fourth down with a minute to go. Tremendous discipline by Bainfeld, the top side corner. He's going to come flying in right there. Doesn't go upfield. Knows there's a reason why all the defensive linemen are being let go. It's going to be a screen. I think Wasian thought about going, but they're going to send out their punt team now. Tyson Rodriguez in punt formation for the like to try to pin in the streaks in the final minute of the opening half. You like to, you would have liked to stay in bounds there. Punt is going to hit. This one will bounce. Archibald's going to elect to not field it. Wasian's going to down it inside the 10. That might change what the Blue Streaks elect to do. 51 seconds before we get to intermission. Yeah, kind of caught in between here if you're David Dominic, the head coach of Archibald and play caller. You want to be aggressive with 51 seconds left and two timeouts, but at the same time, you don't want to be careless. Turn the ball over inside your own 10 and allow Wasian to extend this lead. If you're Archibald, you got to feel like, wow, we're only down by five the way this game started, right? Officials holding up play for just a moment. Everyone is set. We'll see what Archibald will do. I feel like we talk about this just about every week. So kind of run a play, and if you spring one, might go from there. Brenner looking to throw. He's going to fire this one out of bounds. Incomplete. Had one man trying to go, and if it wasn't there, he threw it away. Now it's one of those. It's supposed to be a zone beater, right? But Wasian is playing predominantly man coverage. So as long as you're keeping your eyes on your man, if he releases on a route, you're not going to be fooled by it. Stops the clock. 46 seconds to go before halftime. You hear that wind start to whip around in our headsets a little bit. I think our uh, camera guys might be a little cold out there. Yes. The run, Brenner out across the 10. He'll get a couple. 
And they're not going to whine. They're going to have the play clock, game clock even. We'll see if Archibald elects to run another play. Watch Covard right there, number 10 at the point of attack. Uses his hands to get off the block of Ripke and makes the tackle. That's fantastic work as a linebacker. Good upper body streak. You see him press Ripke off. That's a guy that's worked out in the, in the weight room. Kovar, strong young man. It looked like that was supposed to be a handoff, but Brenner on the snap had problems. As Archibald instead, well, broke the huddle and then at first was headed towards their sideline. Now they're staying up. As I, think they're gonna tell, I think they might have told the White Hat they don't plan on running a play, so they'll let the clock run out. And, and it'll do just that. So, very interesting opening half of football as the Washington Indians up 12-7 at the half. That's yeah, two teams that were going to give us great effort, right? We definitely saw that. How about Armstrong? Electric stuff out of him to give Washington the lead. Halftime here from Blue Streak Stadium. The Indians have the lead. We'll have more for you after this on WOSN. Hey, halftime here from Blue Streak Stadium in Archibald. 12-7, Wasyan with the lead over the host of Blue Streaks. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you live tonight on WOSN. And partner, it's been uh, an interesting first half of football. We saw a black punt, the ensuing free kick return for a score. Same man almost busted through for a kickoff return for a score. Archibald with a long drive. In between there, nothing. Another long drive. Wasion's offense sitting for ten minutes. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been a half a ball. Did you say safety? We had a safety <laughs> in a safety. Had a safety in there as well. Oh, what a what a night! We take a look at some uh, numbers from this one at the half. Uh, Wasion with uh, sixteen offensive plays for fifty-one yards. I'm going to update the stats. I'm not sure how accurate. That is, does say halftime. Let me try this again. I'm going to talk through everything here. As I try to find what I am looking for. Good. you got to love live television, right? Well, well, one of the things that is going to be a little bit different in the second half, though, is the wind has really picked up in the, in, at halftime. So the wind is going to be a factor for the pass game moving forward. It, as you're watching the screen, it blows from right to left. And the uh, flags on top of the goalposts are just being pushed in a strong direction. It is halftime uh, stats that we had here. So Wasian 16 plays, 51 yards. Archibald 44 for 214. Wasian three rushing attempts, negative 13 yards. Archibald 27 for 118. Wasian passing 9 of 13 for 64 yards. Archibald 9 of 17 for 96 penalties. Wasian flagged three times for 30 yards, while uh, Archibald's been flagged four for 35. Third down's been big in that first half. Now, Wasian yet to convert a first down, or a third down into a first down. But that's something that Archibald's done well all year long. They've only allowed 29% conversions on third down. And again, our title sponsor for our broadcast tonight between Archibald and Wasian is the State Bank invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. We'll take one more timeout. When we come back, we'll be ready for the second half here from Archibald. Will be Wasi on ball to begin the second half. The Indians again won the toss, deferred. So here we are. What's turned into a cold night, week nine of the high school football season. I hear the wind. Miles has to move from the window. It's cold. <laughs> the wind chill is definitely picked up. And you see on the sideline some of these assistant coaches in shorts. I always wonder about the thought process behind that. It gets cold out, let's stay in our shorts. I had to put the second layer on before the national anthem. I was a little disappointed in myself. Miles went for the uh, winter hat at I, halftime. Yeah, I, I'm always going to be glove and hat guy when it gets cold. I, I earn a side of caution. The older I get, the more cold I get. Creighton Kern's got this one teed up, ready to go to begin the second half. Uh, following our coverage tonight, let me 
Make sure you uh, flip over at WTLW. Squib kick. It's going to hit one of the up men. That was the plan. And the Indians are just going to sit on this at the 30-yard line. Make sure you tune in for the sports report, 10 o'clock tonight. TV 44, WTLW. One of our favorite guys, Patrick Kamler, your host tonight. Patrick and JKB are down at the Gulf State Championships all day and come back and host the sports report. Good play by Austin Kovar, number 10, to recover that football. Didn't try to do anything foolish with it. Got to treat it like a grenade. Just fall on it. First round of a two-day state golf tournament underway. First down pass has to be thrown out in the flat. That is caught by Arm Jude Armstrong with it. He's going to have about four. Yeah, Armstrong uncovered. Well, a 3-3 look by that Archbold defense. Inside slot uncovered. Go ahead and get it to him quickly. Smart decision by Trey Parsons. Second and six for the Indians. Playing with the lead. Don't know how quick they'll move. Two receivers to the near side, trying to get some help over the top, trying to get set. There is the quick pitch, Armstrong, nowhere to go. Ball came loose at the end of that one, and the Blue Streaks are gonna have it. Well, he was a dynamic dude a year ago in this game. He's being dynamic again. Watch Devin Morris, number 28, playing linebacker, forces it back in. Side Dickman is the guy that's gonna knock it loose, 73. Big paw on the football, Armstrong coughs it up. Archbold, huge moment to start the second half. Well, they force the fumble and the Blue Streaks have it at the Wasion 28, still in the opening minute of our third quarter. Handoff, Carson, Dominic, he's gonna be stacked up. Push back to the 35. We'll see where the officials Logan say Carroll that his progress stopped at. Logan Carroll, the first one in there as that Wasion defense now is going to have to make a play. That's a great philosophy, right? Get him before he gets started. Linebacker fills in a hurry. Carroll plays low. Wasion's had success when they've been able to tackle Dominic by the legs. Don't let him get started. No gain on the play, so still second and 10 from the 28. Brenner rolling, fires, has a man open. That one took an extra minute to get there. Pass is caught. Lucas Dominic with it, and it's a first down, and it's going to be a first and goal near the five. They go fast, and so I don't think Wasion secondary was lined up appropriately because you see Dominic all by himself. Somebody misaligned. Second catch in this football game for Lucas Dominic. We'll have that just outside the 10, it looks like, so my apologies. Yeah, the old, uh, I think they can get a first down inside the one. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So first and 10 from the 11, 17 yards on the pass play. And Dominic straight ahead, muscling his way in, and he'll get to about the five. They're going to use Morris as a lead blocker. Gets a good block by Burroughs inside. And they're going to pull Chase Cornell around. You see him finish up 62, gets himself a block. Pick up six on the run, second and four from the five. Archibald trying to take the lead on our Northwest State Community College scoreboard. Benfeld inside. I see him on the hash, number 16. Brenner give once again. Long flag coming in, the white hat. Throwing that one from a few years back, or from a few yards back. And we're going to have a chop block on Wasion. The official's going to say 14. One of the Indian coaches asking about that. And that's going to be Xavier Martinez. And the White Hat, he threw it like he was angry. Yeah, he was adamant, too. So he must have heard something from one of the uh, Wasion coaches. Now, that's half the distance. It's not going to cost him a ton of territory, but the down's going to be a big thing. So what you do is you teach guys when blockers are coming at them to go ahead and take their legs out. And they got rid of that from the football game a long time ago. You're not allowed to do that. Martinez dove and took out blockers, forced it back inside. Archibald broke the huddle. They were ready to go and then realized there was no football placed. Now we get the official call. 
We'll call it second and one. Ball outside the two, it looks like. Direct snap, Carson Dominic, and he's gonna get in for the second time tonight. Yeah, no doubt about it, right? 25 lined up at quarterback. So it's gonna be a lead around the left-hand side. Nobody there in white jerseys. Katie Bartador, easy score for Archibald. Carson Dominic with a short touchdown run has put Archibald on top for the first time tonight. Now 13-12. And again, our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Northwest State, get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. As it looks like the Archibald offense will stay on the field. A condensed formation, look for outbreaking routes. There is the fake, the handoff. Jack Hurst, coming in Hurst with a little bit of speed, takes a hit, and it looks like he's gonna be short. And the two point conversion's no good. Yeah, gonna bring Hurst around on a reverse. Hope that the defense sucks up on it and he's gonna throw in the back corner of the end zone to an open guy, but well played by Wasian. Hurst almost was able to sneak it in there on the run, but good collision, knocked him out. The streaks take the lead with a touchdown. They're up by one, we'll take a break. Carson Dominic with his uh, second touchdown of the night has put the blue streaks of Archibald on top for the first time this evening. Now 13-12. Oh, cool. Both teams with a couple of touchdowns, right? <laughs> yeah, you get the 13-12, you're used to that score, but how you got there, a little bit different. Is, uh, one of our favorite personalities in the world of professional wrestling likes to say, go around your ear to get to your elbow or go around your elbow to get to your wrist, one of the two. Something like that, right? I knew what I was trying to say. Calling an elbow lock up. Right? Never heard Jim Cornette get go around your <laughs> go around your elbow to get to your wrist. <laughs> Kern with the ball teed up. Well it's been a problem though. We gotta kick the ball deep to Wasan. Last time they put it on the ground, see what they do here. Another squibber. Up men getting out of the way. This one will be downed at about the 33. So you give Wasi on field position. In return, you keep them from getting returns because uh, if you just joined us, Jude Armstrong with a couple impressive ones tonight. Yeah, and one for the touchdown off the safety. And then another one to about the 30 on the left-hand side. I think you'd trade it though, right? Let them start on the 30 or 35 each time as opposed to having a dangerous Returner, they have three dangerous guys back deep, keep the ball out of their hands. Indians start this drive from their own 33. They'll come out with four receivers, three to the near side. See them there in the bottom of your screen. Parsons looking to throw, still looking, make sure he stays behind the line. Now he's gonna tuck it in and go, and he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Parsons had a couple of guys open during the route, but it happened right as pressure gets to him. Remember 2.3 we talked about in the beginning of the game? Well, that's how fast those guys were getting back there. Parsons does everything he can to extend this play. Very fortunate he gets back to the line of scrimmage. That could have been a huge loss. It'll go for no gain, so we'll call it second and 10. And Parsons comes from a long line of quarterbacks in the family. A lot of Parsons have played quarterback here in Northwest Ohio. Trey looks to fire, goes it into the flat, and a good open field tackle as June Armstrong is immediately wrapped up after a gain of two. That's Chapa. Gabe Chapa, leading tackler for this blue streak defense. Kind of quiet in the first half, didn't call his name a whole lot, but one on one with the speedy Armstrong in the flat. The linebacker gets him to the ground. Third and eight from the 35 coming up now. Wasi out with nothing else, wants to get a first down just to keep their defense. And right back out there, Arch will play with all the momentum right now, getting the big touchdown. Parsons with the fake, looks to throw. Flat foot in that one, stepped up, intercepted. It's Carson Dominic at the 40 yard line and Arch will have the football once again. The inside pressure by Morris. You see it right there. He's got to lift snow off the ground. Gets in the face of Parsons, who lofts it up. You correctly said threw it off the flat feet. Tried to sneak it into Smith. 
but Carson Dominic has left his impression on offense on this football game. That time, he delivers a big stamp defensively. 7.42 to go in our third quarter on the Northwest State Community College scoreboard. Archibald with it in Wauseon territory to begin once again at the 41-yard line. Now they'll fake the handoff, Dominic. Brenner is going to run, and he's going to be helicoptered down at about the 40. How about the strength of Logan Carroll, number 33? He's going to fly out there. Tried to hit the seam route again. Brenner's going to leave the pocket. But watch Carroll just ragdoll him. One arm tackle. Come back here. And ripped the sleeve off the jersey there. Sure did. They're going to give him two to the 39. We can hear the wind whipping around up here. Can only imagine what's doing down on the field. I'm going to guess it's blowing hard. Causing any problems with the passing game. Brenner, again the fake, and there's an open lane, and he's going to have what looks to be close to a first down. Yeah, you're going to fake it outside here to Dominic, and then they're going to run quarterback counter back to the top-hand side. Some creative blocking getting done by the offensive line. Fisher's going to let it go. He's going to set up a third down and short. And that hold of the football for just a moment can have suckered in Austin Kovar, who is spying Dominic on the play. Seven-yard run is... Brings up third and one, as Miles mentioned, from the 32-yard line. That's showing big time blitz by Wasian. And Archibald yeah, might have jumped point. here. Wasian might have suckered him into a five-yard penalty, and, and they did. The so we talked about the penalties that they have for Archibald. Again, I believe it was uh, four penalties for 35 yards for the streaks, and what, three of those false starts? They were false starts, and you're gonna see Kovar fake the blitz. Draw the offensive lineman to leave his stance. That's going to be another false start. Third down and six now. And definitely four down territory if you're David Dominic. Third and one is now turned into third and six after the penalty. High snap. Ball still loose, scooped up by the Indians. The teams will trade turnovers. Zayden Kessler, one fortuitous hop, nearly took this one to the house. Marshall's very fortunate Kessler loses his balance or else he's dancing in the end zone. Cartwheels over top. After uh, NFL, the NFL, he could have just jumped right yeah. up, kept on running. Keep on going. Unfortunate bad snap by Burroughs over top to quarterback Brenner's head. Changes the complexion of this football game in a hurry. Now, near the halfway point of the quarter, Indians are going to have it on the Archibald side of the field, the Blue Streak 49. Second possession in a row where the team is going to start on the other, on the plus side of the field. Long throw, that one red by Chase Miller. Knew the pass was coming to Sam Smith, and he's going to blow that up for a loss. A good recognition by Miller. He sees Smith inside. Borton's going to try and get the block, but Wow, Chase Miller almost intercepted it himself and then Smith stays up, but probably shouldn't have as everybody in the township of Archibald got a hit on him. Loss of five, backs the Indians to their own side of the field to the 46. Indians breaking the huddle late. Inside slot. Uncovered if they want it. Parsons looking. Parsons Throw this one. And Lincoln College and the pros, they take a look at a replay, make sure that wasn't scooped off the ground. It's going to be ruled a catch. Luckily, we have replay to tell you whether or not that's a good pass or not. Right, Gabe Chapel plays this really well from the inside linebacker spot. <laughs> 50 cents a hop, I think. Armstrong's gonna pay as he caught that one. Dominic and Gomez deliver a hit on him along with Chapa. Still at the 46, third and 15 coming up here. Woo, that was a heck of a catch. Either way, it goes for no gain. So you'd have the same result. 
Parsons rolling under pressure. Trying to step up, he's gonna go down back at his 36 yard line. Now it's gonna be Wyatt Ripke, who already had a big play in this half. Delivers another one. Parsons gonna try and leave the pocket. But Ripke's gonna win that matchup as he beats the right tackle Vasquez with a great arm under and then has the discipline to keep Parsons inside, gets the sack. Tyson Rodriguez for the Indians. Loss of 10, brings up fourth and long, we'll say. Rodriguez high, end over end punt. And it is gonna be fair caught by Chase Miller just outside his 40 yard line. And Archibald's come up with a big stop. But you see the uh, high wind is like a wall. Rodriguez kicked that thing extremely high and then it just hit the wind and went straight down. And we're taking uh, nominations now for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at a website, wosn.tv slash John Reed. Carson Dominic, first down run. Gonna get some help from his lineman. That pile's moving forward, still moving. Haven't heard a whistle, but it does look like officials are gonna break it up. That was uh, I think the, the weirdest jazz hand <laughs> fight you've ever, I expected some snamping to go in there. It was uh, some, some sharks and. It was a mistimed play as Dominic ran into Dominic in that Archbold backfield. The jazz hands weren't effective. <laughs> Sets up second down and long, and it's something we've seen in the last couple of weeks, officials blowing the whistle really late. It's a gain of one on the run, second and nine from the 42. Brenner looking to throw, he's gonna keep it short, has this open, has a man in the flat. And a ball comes out at the end, and again, Sam Smith is on the bottom of the pile, and Wasion's gonna force another turnover. Yeah, Devin Morris is gonna claim that he's down, but I don't believe it is. It's an under-under concept, dragging under, gonna pick off a linebacker to get Morris free. He's open, the big fella starts rumbling, but is it Xavier Martinez that knocks it loose? It's Kovar that knocks it loose, and Sam Smith He's gonna fall on him, partner. I don't think his knee was down. I Did think that's clearly like a fumble. Does anybody want to win this football game <laughs> as both teams keep giving turnover after turnover? Second fumble of the quarter, and the Indians with 3.13 to go in the third. Get it back, thrown 41. Well, Austin Kovar's having himself a night defensively for Wasian. Indians no points in the quarter. Starting drives their own 30, own 33. Archibald 49, now own 41. First down's gonna go forward a little bit as Parsons keep this himself, get to about the 43, maybe 44. Now Lance Bauer, number 45, who was alert to the quarterback lead for Archibald, makes the tackle. Gain of three, it's now second and seven. Indians gonna do everything they can. They make Trey this Parsons the last drive of the quarter as well. Parsons again straight ahead, taking over as the top runner. He'll get another yard, and it's gonna be third and six from the 45. Lance Bauer says, go ahead, keep running, quarterback lead. I'm ready for it. Two straight tackles for Bauer, the designated quarterback lead stopper. Wasion stays on the field, not really huddling. Now they're set again, third down coming up here. Parsons, quick throw, gets that screen set. Sam Smith trying to bounce to the outside, looking forward, and it looks like, we'll see where the surge is. Official on the far side telling him to move the sticks, even though he looks a yard shy. They're gonna put the down box, oh, they're gonna go ahead and move them. Whoa, this is odd, you're right about this. Let's watch as he comes up at the end of the play. Good, well played by Gomez as he beats the block of Rodriguez. Smith just puts his head down and the official on that side is gonna say, yeah, go ahead and move the chains, but by that angle, it looks like he's a little bit short. Get to the Archibald 49, so they're gonna give him six. Staying in that four receiver set. Parsons again, long throw. This is behind the line. Sam Smith able to cut up field again, using his 
athleticism will get another first down, this time inside the 40. Uh, this is all Sam Smith right here. He's gonna beat three blue streaks to get positive yardage. Stiff arm right there, Major League Stiff arm in a big way. Outruns Morris to the sideline, and then just a little dipsy do around Miller to get inside for a first down. You see why the University of Toledo is excited about having big number 11 on their team next year. Picked up 11 there. Rockets coming off a big win at Northern Illinois, their own personal house of horrors. Now, designed run play. I haven't seen a lot of that going. Logan Carroll, he'll get about a yard. Yeah, when you're not a team that runs the football a great deal, it's tough to turn it on when you need it. Chapa, number 51, another tackle, breeds it, comes flying up, meets at the line of scrimmage. Wasiat will have to run at least one more play before we get to the end of the quarter. Parsons in a shotgun, gets the snap. Again looking, has a man, that one drops. Smith had it started cut up field, never secured the football. It's incomplete, and it's third and nine. It's definitely going to turn up and run before he caught it. A little bit of a low throw. The big receiver had to go down and get it, one he should have had. He's open on the curl concept because everybody in a blue jersey is so worried about the bubble screen to Jude Armstrong. Wasian, the players with that long look to the sideline again. Get the uh, play board called in. Expect to see a Miles Holiday head pop up at any moment. <laughs> you don't want to scare the kids. Third nine incomplete. That one thrown a little too far ahead of Jude Armstrong. Promising drive. Stalls out. It's fourth down. No man's land. What do you do here for the, if you're the Indians? Uh, I think you punt the football because it's fourth down and nine, and there's a lot of time. Start playing a little field position here. See if you can shrink the field by getting the ball back, but it looks like Sean Moore is gonna go ahead and roll the dice. They're gonna go. The offense stays on the field. Now, a lot of the special teamers are on this offense, but right now it looks like they'll go for it. And they do, Parsons gonna roll out. Looks to throw, pass is caught. And that's going to be a first down. We're going to take a look at the replay because it looked like the receiver's momentum carried him out of bounds. We're going to take a look, Miles. A yeah, great throw by Parsons. There's a natural thrower running to his left. They're going to say he caught it beyond the sticks and his momentum made him come back. First down. You got to wonder, what's Archibald doing letting Smith get open on fourth down and nine, play underneath him? Yeah, picked up 10, big first down to the 27. Parsons rolls near side again as a man, middle of the field. This one is Rodriguez. He's going to be folded up at about the 21, so give him about six. It had a quiet night so far offensively. Rodriguez finally gets free, just kind of settles in on the zone. Steven Diller, number nine, gonna deliver a big time hit. So number nine on the white side can't keep running. That's how the third quarter will end. So we'll flip the field, big fourth quarter coming up. I expect nothing else in a close rivalry game here on WOSN. Brady Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here from Blue Streak Stadium in Archibald. 13-12. Blue Streaks have taken the lead as we begin the fourth quarter. What's turned into a chilly night here in Northwest Ohio with one week left to go in the regular season. Not chilly, but the action's been hot. These guys have played extremely hard. Elite level effort out here. Not the cleanest game, but it's been played extremely hard. And wouldn't believe he said this is a matchup between a seven and one team and a six and two team. Both teams four and one in the NWOAL lost to the same team in Liberty Center. Uh, wondering about the NWOAL race, Liberty Center rolling over Evergreen tonight. So it looks like the Tigers will uh, wrap up at least a share of the league championship with a week to go. And back to that three down lineman look, three, three look. Archibald. They've been mixing a four front and a three front tonight. 
Ryan Friend, the ball carrier. Wasiano run out of this. Ryan Friend on second and four. He's going to move forward, move A forward. And it looks like he'll have the first down. First down the John Spurgeon, the center, number 57. Gets a good job, good job blocking the spring and friend open. In that alignment, you're you're kind of if you're Archibald, you're begging Wasian to run the football. You only have five in the box. Giving him five on the run. First and ten from the 16. Handoff friend once again, straight ahead. Just gonna a nickel and dime their way as they get a couple. Wasion goes back to that same set. They could hit Armstrong from the inside slot on the left-hand side on a skinny post as the middle of the field is vacated by that Archbold secondary. Run's going to go for a single yard, so we're going to call it second and nine from the 15. Archbold recognizes and changes up, puts Diller in the middle of the field. Now Ethan Borton with it. Just taking the free yards. Morton's going to hit you up right in the vacated spot. Safety plays off so far. Go ahead and hit you up in front. Take the free five yards. Third down and five. That wind is continuing to blow. You wonder if they don't get the first down here, do you go ahead and kick the field goal with Rodriguez? Three receivers to the near side. Parsons is going to roll that way, nearly trip, trying to get some room. Pass is caught. Is Jude Armstrong with it about to seven? And now fourth and decision time coming up for Wasion. Fourth and one, tough when you're a shotgun team. You automatically just go underneath center and sneak it for the first down. Are they calling a measurement? They whistle the clock stopped. And the officials having it, and they will. Take the timeout here. So this next play will be the 14th. So right now a 13 play drive for Wasion. As I look at my uh, play chart, that is longer than the previous four Wasion drives combined. Well, it was extended by the great fourth down and nine catch on the sideline by Smith. What do you think, partner, short? I think he's gonna be short. I think he's gonna get it. You're gonna have that right at the nose of the football. Fourth and a nose. Oof, that is close. And I mean, just an, uh, not a schnoz, a yeah, nose. Uh, a There's a difference. Uh, not a big nose either. That's right. Yeah. That's right. No plastic surgery nose. That's <laughs> that's a regular nose. So just a regular Ken Reeker type nose. Sorry, Ken. We love you, buddy. Lovely nose. Well, what do you do here? You're a shotgun team that likes to spread the ball around. You go inside, run the friend. Would be the smart money here, fourth and short. Try to draw Archibald offside. Play clock under 10. Parsons not really ready to get the snap. He gets it. Looking to run, stretches a play out. Archibald's going to blow it up for a loss, and the streaks will take over with a football. This one looked like it was ill faded from the start. Going to run, open option. Diller comes flying up, number nine, forces the action back inside. Siegel comes from inside out, makes the play, denies a big fourth down. It's gonna go a long way for Archibald if they win this football game. Huge defensive stop. 14 play drive, goes for naught. That's why you run to the football, right? Defensive coaches always say that. Big number 70, Mason Siegel. Runs from inside out, makes the play. Drive that started with 3.13 to go in the third. It's a five minute drive, ends up fruitless. First down yardage there for the Blue Streaks. They will now go into clock killing mode. Still plenty of time right now, just over nine to go. Yeah, we still have a long time in this football game. 
If Lassian can get a stop, they'll have great field position because Archibald will be punting into that strong wind. Second and four from the 16. Brenner. Keep it. He's going to be tripped up. Yeah, Zane, Zane Kessler, Kessler with a good stop. Yeah, Kessler had the scoop on the fumble a series ago. Playing that defensive left side end. Blows it up. Loss of two. It's now third and six. Hey, Terry Lynn, defensive coordinator for the Indians. Dial up some pressure. Bring people here on this third down. Trips to the field. Brenner, long look. Gets the snap. Late option pitch. Carson Dominic with it, fighting. And that is going to look close. And Dominic slow to get up. But you said he played basketball early in his career here at Archbold, and it's a good thing because he's going to pick up this ball off the ground. One little dribble to him. Not how you draw up the option pitch, but Carson Dominic, good hands to pick it up and get the first down. Oh, that would have been absolutely disastrous had Wasiam been able to pick it up. But Carson Dominic, player of the game so far for Archbold. Big first down for the Blue Streaks out to the 21 yard line. You see the clock rolling under eight to go in our Northwest State Community College scoreboard. Snap goes back, nobody ready as they're gonna reset the play clock. Heads up play by the center though, knowing you snap it to avoid a penalty. Right, you think he was looking at the play clock running down and said we'll go ahead and snap it? And Burl's a smart player. The officials are gonna take a side and reset it. That wind continues to whip around. High snap, that one pulled down. First down run gonna go next to nowhere. Yeah, so many white jerseys up on the line of scrimmage, especially between the tackles, eating up A and B gap. At some point in time, Archbold's gonna have to make a throw. It's gonna be tough to do because this wind is definitely picked up coming directly in their face. Gonna have to move the pocket for Brenner or else throwing vertically gonna be a real big problem. Loss of one is going to bring second and 11 from the 20. Brenner looking to throw out to Carter Bainfelt. He's got to go down to a knee to come up with it. Short gain there. And third down coming up. At some point in time, I think Jude Armstrong is going to go ahead and make a break on those short breaking routes. He's got the quickness to go ahead and jump that route, make a big play for that Wasion defense. Been the favorite thing when they've gotten Brenner out of the pocket, hit the short little hitch for the free yardage. Armstrong is going to read that eventually. Third and seven, we'll call it from the 24. Brenner looking to throw, long throw. Bainfelt with another one. It's pushed out of bounds by Armstrong after the first down, out to the 35. And you see Kessler kind of spying the quarterback, almost gets his hands on it. Great throw by Brenner, getting over top of that. Another breaking route out towards the sideline for a conversion for Archbold, down to 6-10 now. Picked up 11 there. Next play be the seventh of the drive for the Blue Streaks. Trying to put together a time-consuming drive. Already held the ball three and a half minutes. Carson Handoff, Dominic Carson Dominic's gonna wait for his blockers to form. Nice cut back and he's gonna be close to midfield with yet another blue streak first down. Yeah, best run play of the night for Archibald has been this counter play. Locked down on the play side, bring the backside around and Dominic gets behind him. Every time they've run it, they've gotten big yardage. Foul that one away in your brain. Wait for Archibald to bring it back up. Picked up another 12 there. Been big play after big play, last three of them. Brenner gets the snap, back to Dominic, cuts up field, he'll get in Wasion territory. He's down at about the 47 yard line, so we'll give him about five as this next snap is gonna come with under five minutes to go. As offensive line starting to feel themselves being able to close this out. Great block by Ripke that time. And 
Archibald doing a great job of running the clock down, eating as much time as possible. They've already flipped the football field. Two receivers with that H-back. Here's Dominic again. There's Austin Kovar in there. Dominic still able to fall forward, at least for no gain. And now third and short coming up here. And Archibald going to change up some personnel, bring Dominic and Gomez in the game. Take some extra receivers out of here. It looks like Carson Dominic is going to. Yeah, Dominic's going to stay in the game. He's going to come in, and they're going to get the direct snap to him, it looks like. Yeah, Brenner on the sideline. Timeout. Yeah, the Blue Streak's unhappy with the way their personnel are trying to get the play in. It's a timeout in the field. We'll take one as well. Big third down coming up when we return. Big third down coming up here for the Archibald Blue Streaks trying to run out this clock. It hasn't been the easiest as they look to extend their win streak over Wasey on to six in a row. 13-12 in a game where they trailed through most of the opening half. Got the Carson Dominic touchdown run. Early in the third, take the lead. They've been playing on it. Defense held firm. Wasian lost the ball on downs deep in Archibald territory. Big third down, Carson Dominic gets that direct snap of that jumbo package, and it's going to be fourth down, and we'll call it about two or three, depending on where they mark this. Now, Chance Snow gets in the backfield, forces a cutback right into Austin Kovar, who seemingly has been involved in every single tackle in the second half for Wasian. Fourth down, you're watching the football. Someone on that Wasion sideline screaming it to the defensive line. Watch the ball, don't jump off. Play the game, coming up right here. Archwell's gonna keep their offense. Different look again with Dominic. Jumbo set, here's Dominic straight ahead. Moving the pile, first down and more. Finally goes down inside the 35. And now Wasion has those three timeouts left, and the Indians are going to have to think about using them. And Dominic leads the way, but not to be denied. Look at Chance Snow get on the back of Carson Dominic. Martinez as well. Dominic drags him for an extra five yards. The diesel truck might be leading the parade to victory. Pickup of 11. Dominic coming out of the huddle, and again, a little confusion as Brenner will come back in as Dominic was the uh, de facto quarterback in a couple of those last plays. Brenner back in, they stack heavy to the right side. Feels Run's like gonna Gomez go that here. way, this time Gomez the call. He's gonna be pushed back, loss, and we'll say a yard. And it looks like that first Indian timeout is gonna be taken here with 2.44 left to go. And again, our scoreboard tonight, Brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Northwest State, get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. Now by getting that last first down, Archbold has assured that if they do have to give up the football, there'll be a Wasi on offense, so it'll be out of timeouts. We'll have to use it here on the next down and again on third down. Of course, if Archbold picks up another first down, you know, they can start thinking about singing their fight song and celebrating win number six in a row over Wasian. Each team with two timeouts left. Archibald cheerleaders trying to get everyone ready to go. It's been an entertaining one. 13-12. Rivalry dates back 60 plus years. And Dominic back in the football game. Don't be surprised if he carries it again here. Second and 11 after the timeout. Brenner looking to throw. Going for the home run ball. That was going to be held up as Carter Bainfeld turned around the wrong way. It might have been held as well. Still makes the catch inside the five. Oh, nobody thought there would be a vertical throw into the win when you're eating clock. Little hitch on the outside and go. Bainfield one-on-one -on -one against Armstrong. Armstrong is holding him. 
goes right over top of Armstrong for the catch. That might be the ceiling catch right there. Here is the call, pass interference. They're gonna decline it. And Bainfeld held it in. Does that cement him as a dynamic dude? Puts him into running. He's more of a jet, not a truck. 33 yards. Now the officials. They're gonna reset. How about the call by David Dominic there? Going vertical, and everybody thought they was gonna be happy to run the clock out. Takes a shot. Might be the kill shot in this football game. Should mention, if Archibald scores, get an extra point, it'd still be a one possession game for the Indians. So, silver lining. Yeah, if you're watching, you, you go ahead and let them walk in, right? Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, kind of the Mike Holmgren in the Super Bowl. Let the Broncos score so you get the ball back. Play clock down to five. There's Dominic, and that is exactly what Wasion did. Now, if you're Archibald, do you go for two here? We have a flag down. Carson Dominic, his third touchdown of the night, 19-12. I did not see, there is, is there a flag at the five yard? Like, I could tell it was a flag. Or yeah, kind of obstructed grass. by yeah. the, the line. I think it's gonna be yet another false start. It's picked up, the officials have this one now. What do we have? Oh, we have a shot block, second shot block in the night called. That's gonna back up, and you see Wasian's defense players, Jude Armstrong, number eight. Kind of telling these guys, hey, we're just, don't do anything, let them score. Yeah, kind of weird that there's a chat block call when the entire defensive line just kind of backpedaled, allowing Archbold to score. I think Coach Sean Moore telling the officials in his conversation, no, no, I want him to score the touchdown. I want I, I want the football. That's more important. Can you decline the penalty and give them the result of the play? And I think that's what they're 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 talking about the officials can say it makes no sense there's the chop block called an arch will they are going to decline it so the touchdown will stand maybe some people probably don't understand but you get the ball it guarantees the indians <laughs> it just doesn't feel natural does Time it <laughs> so you are right well wasion's going to get it back here with about a minute 50 to go with a big extra point looming here. Yeah, you kicked the extra point to make it a seven. You're kind of alluding to maybe go for two to put it out of reach, but you don't get it. Now you're in a world of hurt. Current on to attempt the extra point. Hold is down, and he's going to blast that one deep into the night where the uh, youngster, Sir Archwold, come up with a big touchdown. And now Archwold, with an eight-point lead, will take a break. We'll see how Wasion responds right after this. Big play for uh, Archibald as uh, they managed to get a touchdown. Carson Dominic, his third score of the night from three yards out, makes it 20 to 12 on our Northwest State Community College scoreboard. Now another decision for the Blue Streaks. They've had a few squib kicks, given Wasion decent field position, but kick it deep to pin them in, and you face hey, the kick triple it in. threat yeah. trying to return triple this threat. one. Triple threat and one big threat in Jude Armstrong, but I, you got the wind really blowing at you. I, I think you've had success putting it on the ground. You know, oh, with Curran with his leg, with the wind at his back, do you hope that he can tell him to put it in the end zone with the chance that maybe comes up a little short? I, I just don't know if he can with the, that wind blowing at you as hard as it is. I think he put it on the ground again and make Wasian put together eight to 10 plays and 156 the beat or to tie you. A lot of things have to go right for Wasian. Have to score a touchdown and then get the two-point conversion. But like we said last week, in a similar situation before a late touchdown, kind of made it moot. 
If you're Wasian, all you want is a chance. That's what you got right now. Kern do decide to go with a squib kick. And this one trouble. Well, did, but it never came loose. It is going to be fielded by the Indians, so they will have it at the 32 as we take a look. Uh, almost a ceiling recover by Dominic, but Martinez gets on it. What is this brown thing and why is it coming at me? Almost another turnover for Wazian. So the Indians with a minute 53 need eight points to tie, start from their own 32. All right, Trey Parsons, you want to be a legend in the history of Wazian football? Lead you guys down here for a score with 153 left. Good time to tell you that our broadcast tonight to an Archibald Wasian brought to you by the State Bank Investor Northwest, West Central Ohio, skilled objective, caring financial planners. Great. First down, Parsons. Parsons will throw this one away and bring up a second down. It's gonna bring up for second the and Blue 10. The Still at the 32 yard line. At the Wasian, uh, 34 yard line. Second down. All right, mark that 33. Indians also have two timeouts you see in our scoreboard, or Northwest State Community College scoreboard, in their pocket. Parsons comes to the line. He's going to shout out the play there. Gets the snap. Drops back in. He's going to be brought down. Back at the 26-yard line as Mason Siegel comes up with yet another sack. And the Indians will take a timeout here. It's going to leave them with one, and it sets them up with a third and long, as that's going to go for a loss of about five. Third and 15. Exciting football here next week. We've got more last week of the regular season, and our crew will be in Edgerton. It's the Bulldogs and the Antwerp Archers. Battle is Antwerp in search of its first ever GMC League title. Next Friday night here at WOSN, we're live at 645, kickoff at 7. And then, as always, head over to TV44, WTLW, for the sports report following at 10 o'clock. Tons of action yet to come this week. Also, stay tuned to our website, WOSN.TV, broadcast coverage. But you know what we've got planned for you with uh, tournament soccer and volleyball. Of course, playoff football just a couple of weeks away. Both these teams tonight look like they're going to be in the playoffs. See what uh, their assignments will be a week's time. Parsons, third and 15, looking to throw. Going for the home run ball downfield, and it's going to be incomplete. As Sam Smith double covered. That one is going to be knocked away. Looks like a little conversation going on between Smith and some of the Archibald defenders. And it's now fourth and ball game coming up for the Indians. Hey, Randy, did you happen to see the contact on Smith? The official reached for his flag, but the last second decided not to. Might have been a huge call on pass. Hey, you see Sam Smith kind of looked at the official. Chase Miller obviously happy with a call for the Blue Streaks. So here we go, fourth and 15 coming up here for Wasian. Parsons gets the snap, trying to step up past time. Fires this one well, incomplete to the sideline. Looking for Jude Armstrong. And the Archibald offense is gonna get back onto the field. And for the sixth time in a row, the Blue Streaks are gonna knock off their rivals in Wasian. Indians have one timeout remaining, so they can stop the clock once with a minute 26 to go. Of the five previous losses, and Miles, I know you've seen all of them. Don't know if there's more heartbreaking one than this one for Wasian. Quarterback's gonna take a little bit of time. 
take that knee as Archwold is ready to go. Wasian looks like is not choosing to stop the clock. So Brenner want to run a little bit of time, get that clock set, just make sure they only had to do it. And make sure they did the math correct and that they wouldn't give the ball back over to Downs with a few seconds to go. So Archibald will just have to snap this one one more time now as they get the protectors to the right and left of Brenner. The clock will run all the way down. Get this one, takes the knee, and it looks like that is going to do it. As teams will shake hands. They'll let the few seconds remain run off. And for the sixth year in a row, the Archibald Blue Streaks have knocked off the Wauseon Indians. So Archibald will retain the Lions Club trophy. 2012 the final. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, our Miles Holiday will be joined down on the field with our dynamic due to the game when we return. There is the Archibald Wasian Lions Club traveling trophy. There's the Archibald Blue Streaks for the sixth time in a row have defeated their rivals in the Wauseon Indians. 20 to 12, our final tonight. Carson Dominic, three rushing touchdowns. The uh, big effort tonight, there is our Miles Holiday. There is one of the grandest mullets you can possibly put on television as we try to get our guy here. And we are ready to go down on the field with our Miles Holiday and our dynamic dude and dynamic hair of the night. Our dynamic dude, the diesel truck. Carson Dominic, you were absolutely sensational tonight, a physical force. I uh, saw you after the game, told you you're gonna be our player of the game. Uh, you had some emotions at that moment. Uh, talk to us a little bit about how important this is to you, because uh, you can definitely tell you're emotional. Yeah, you know, it's my senior year. I'm not planning on playing college football, so I mean, I want to make a statement, so. Now that you guys have made a statement, especially the last six years, you own this rivalry. How are you guys able to dominate this rivalry six in a row now? You know, I think it comes back to our coaching staff. We have a really, really good coaching staff who takes care of business and practice and off the field, on the field. Yeah. Your philosophy, you're running the football. I love it. I read it this week. Uh, you want to outwork and out hit everybody. How are you able to exhibit that here tonight? Uh, I mean, they gave me the ball, so. I love that. It's just simple. They gave me the ball, and when you had the football, you were a physical presence. Uh, the mindset, when you guys were running the football at the end of the game, just dominating at the last scrimmage, how fun was it seeing the excitement in the eyes of your offensive line? Oh, it's awesome. I love my offensive line, man. They block for me. I buy them donuts on Saturdays. We're all buddies. It's awesome. Uh, buying you donuts on Saturdays, what time do we need to be there? <laughs> oh, we, go, we come in at 9. <laughs> All right, we'll be there at nine. You guys win the Lions trophy again. It stays here in Archbold. You have one more game in the regular season, getting ready for the playoffs. What's it going to take for you guys to make a deep run? Uh, well, like I said, I mean, coaching and practicing hard. A man of few words, but a man of many actions. Carson Dominic, our dynamic dude of the game. The diesel truck. Keep it rolling in the playoffs. Randy, that guy, he was definitely dynamic. Uh, what an effort he had tonight. We take a look at the final numbers. 32 carries, 158 yards, three touchdowns as the Blue Streak, six in a row over Wauseon. 20 to 12 again, the final. We want to thank everyone made our night possible here in Archibald, starting with Alan Gladio, the athletic director at Archibald High School. Curtis Rick Jason working the cameras. Jason with us for the first time in his career. Certainly not the last. We'll get him to come back. And of course, our director, producer, Ken Reeker. And of course, Kelly, Kelly Gatz back at Master Control at our WOSN studios in Lima. So that final, once again, it's six in a row for Archibald over Wauseon. Blue Streaks win 20 to 12 for my partner, Miles Holiday and our entire WOSN crew. Thanks for watching, everyone.